the small shirk is worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal Jalla Jalalu to be adorned by the eyes of other people. This is lesser shirk. This is a major sin. It's one of the kabair of Imam Zahabi rahmatullahi alayhi. So we have to be very, very careful. Hmm? So he tests his slaves. He tests his slaves. From the Quran al Karim, Surah Al Ankabut, chapter of the spider. Does man, does mankind think that he will not be tested? Those who say we believe that they will not be tested. No, they will be tested. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may know who are those who are the Siddiqs, who are the champion of truths, and who are the hypocrites. Hmm? Very soon we are coming to a day in Madinatul Munawwara where Madina will shake. And all the munafiqeen will be thrown out of Madina. This is very soon. Very, very soon now. How do you differentiate between these bad ideas? Okay, so the first, as I mentioned last week, if you find that the idea is unequivocal, it's unambiguous, you are firmly determined in that idea, then know that that idea is from the passionate self. Know that that idea is from, that bad idea is from your nafs. Because why? Your nafs, if it's something bad, your nafs will be always nashat, nashat alayha. Your nafs will always be enthusiastic upon it. Hmm? Allahu Akbar. Anything bad, your nafs will always be there to jump for it. You'll be the first there to instigate, to cause these notions in your mind to do it. But if you find the idea vacillating and it's confusing, then know that that idea is none other from Shaitan al rajim La'natullahi alayhi. And many of the Arifin, as I mentioned, the similes between the nafs and the um, zealotic fighter, the one who fights in zeal. I'm not going to go through that again, inshallah. Then the uh, second perspective to understand how to differentiate between these bad notions, the, f the, s the second perspective is that if you find it in the wake of a sin you committed, you're praying your salah, as I mentioned last week, and all of a sudden you think of a sin that you committed before. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibtida, directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has put that idea in your head. It's not an idea, it's a, it's a haunting of the past, yes or no? If you are haunted, when you say haunted, things that you have done before, yes or no? Hmm? You can't say um, the queen haunted, you can't, uh, someone, <laughs> say for example, someone down your road you never met before, uh, Elizabeth or something down the road. Uh, Elizabeth passed away and uh, all of a sudden she appears in your bed. How do you know that that's Elizabeth? You can't say I was haunted by Elizabeth. Hmm. If you are haunted by a few things, that's, that, that haunting is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As what? As an insult and as a chastisement due to the wickedness of the sin you committed. And this is Allah's wake-up call to you, that it's high time for you, you appear, be, you, you appear in my court, and yet your heart is filthy of sin. Go and make tawbah before you come in my court. Does everyone here understand this? But if it's not in the wake of a sin, it becomes an idea now, yes or no? Where does that idea come from? Shaitan. Hmm? She comes from shaitan. So if it's in the wake of something that you have never not done, then know that it is from shaitan. Okay? Because what does the devil always do? He starts with the invitation to evil and seeks to mislead in every single matter of yours. Okay? So beware of shaitan and seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan al rajim now the third perspective of differentiating these bad notions, bad notions from shaitan, from your nafs and directly from Allah, we have to mention directly here, ibtida. Okay? Directly inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third perspective to differentiate them, if you find that the notion is weak and it does not wala yaqillu bi dhikrillahi ta'ala, it doesn't lack in the remembrance of Allah. Nor wala yazul, nor is it quick to fade away. This idea is not quick to fade away. So again, I mention again, please understand, if the idea is weak, is not weak, the idea isn't weak, the idea doesn't make you um, less, lessen your dhikr of Allah, 
and nor does the idea fade away, then know that that idea is from the passion itself. But if you find the idea yad'uf, if you find the idea weak, and it causes the dhikr to become shorter, you don't have much time to make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's causing you to distance away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ then know that that idea is from shaitan. كَمَا ذَكَرَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى As Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ Yes or no? From the evil, مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ From the evil whisperings of the, of the slinking, the slinking whisperer. You know what slinking means? Slinking means to slip, when you slink up to someone. What does slink mean? Cowardly. And uh, shame in a shameful manner, he cowardly, he slinks up to the son of Adam. This is the real meaning of um, khanna, khanna, hmm? khanna, khannas, eh? khan. To, 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 to crawl up to the individual in a very cowardly manner. Hmm? Subhanallah. Hmm? As, a, as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna shaytana jathimun ala qalbi ibn Adam. إذا ذكر الله تعالى خنس خنس ذلك خن خنس ذبب خنس. He slinks away. سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم says, Indeed, Satan, he is ever crouching upon the heart of the son of Adam. If the son of Adam remembers Allah, خنس he slinks away. What does he do? He slinks away. That's a better word used for Satan. To degrade him, slinking, he doesn't vanish or disappear. He slinks away. Ida ghafala, was was. If the son of Adam is heedless, what happens? He starts whispering. As soon as, in so far as the son of Adam remains engaged in the dhikr of Allah, Shaitan has no authority over such a person. Shaitan has no authority over such a person. But as soon as you open the opening of your fortress, your heart, is your heedlessness. To give that access to shaitan is because of our ghufla, our heedlessness. Now we go on to the third subject, the third section. How do we differentiate between a good idea that comes directly from Allah or from mulhim? How do you know? Or oh, is that idea from Allah? Or is that idea from my angelic inspirer? We look at this from two different perspectives. Two different perspectives. The first perspe perspective. If you find that your idea is strong and, uh, and unambiguous, musammim, it's unequivocal, yeah? You know what you're doing. There's a firm resolve in this idea. You're firmly determined to do it. You don't look right or not left, neither do you look behind yourself. Then know that this idea is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That idea, that good idea, sorry, that good idea, I don't want to confuse anyone. That good idea is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in kana mutaraddidan, if that idea is indecisive, the idea is irresolute, that idea is, you know, wavering. It's bringing you only confusion. You're being confused. Then know that that idea, that good idea, is from who? The angelic inspirer, Mulhim alayhi salam. It's from your angelic inspirer. Because, you know, Mulhim, he always is always with you. He explores every single aspect and facet with you. He doesn't stop, he's always with you. And he's always counseling you in matters pertaining to good and none other than good. He is your wise counselor. Okay, so that's how you differentiate. Now the second perspective, if you find that the idea comes to your mind and on, in your heart, in the wake of some effort that you have done in the ta'a of Allah, in the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then know that that idea is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say for example, for example, let me tell you of a great jihad today, yeah? I'm not talking about AK-47s or RPGs here. Yeah, let's talk about a proper jihad. 
a jihad that we need to all embark upon. You're about to retire to bed. Okay? You're about to retire to bed. All of a sudden, mulhim is starting at you. I'm giving you an example, yes? Mulhim is starting to inspire you. Go and do wudu. It's sunnah. Yes or no? You've never done wudu before you slept in or you were in your, in your entire life. But you know that it's sunnah to do it. But yet, you do not do wudu before you sleep. Go and do wudu. Ya Abdullah, go and do wudu. It's sunnah. Then you're contemplating, it's not really firm, yes or no? If it was firm, you'd be, you'd, be in that, you'd be in that bathroom straight away doing wudu, if it's from Allah. So it's wavering, you know, it's irresolute. You know, you're hesitant. Shall I do it? Shall I not do it? It's from, it's from mulhim here. So eventually, through the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and none other than the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get up and you make wudu. Ka wudu is salah. Just like the wudu for salah. As mentioned in the hadith, مَنْ تَوَضَّعَ بِأَحْسَنِ, بأحسن وُضُوءٍ Whoever performs his wudu in the best of manners, and afterwards he prays two rakats, two cycles of prayer, and between the wudu and the, and the nafil, the optional prayer, تَحَيَاتُ wudu, there is no interaction with the world, nor does his nafs, he doesn't think of the dunya, nothing. He's all engrossed in the love and awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon if he is able to maintain this, this frame of mind, as soon as he makes his finishing salams, it will be as if he has just exited the womb of his mother. Ah, is it something, something simple to do? <laughs> it's very, very hard. For me personally, I tell you frankly, my dear brothers, only if Allah wills it to happen, He will make it happen for you. If Allah wills it for you, if Allah singles you out, out of His grace, then it will happen. You can try for 40 years, if Allah does not will for you to achieve this, this tranquility and this station, this maqam, you will never be able to attain it, no matter how hard you try. But Allah will reward you for your efforts, of course. Of course He will. So then you've just made wudu and you're retiring to bed. Mulhim saying, read the sunnah. Qul huwa Allah wahad three times. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak three times. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas three times. And many other um, masnoon dua from the sunnah. And you do it. Isn't that an effort from your behalf? Yes or no? So here Imam Ghazali says, if it is in the wake of some serious effort you have done in his way, then know that this idea, an idea will come into your mind. You will start to think, I want to wake up for tahajjud tomorrow. I want to do tahajjud. You will definitely, if that is done with sincerity, I guarantee you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your eyes for salat tahajjud. No doubt, there's no doubt in this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, then He wills it. He wills it for you. Hmm? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, it's one of my favorite ayahs. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا And those who really strive in our ways, in our paths, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا We surely guide them to our paths. He will help you and He will assist you. وَثَبِّتْ أَقَدَامَهُمْ سُرَةُ مُحَمَّدٍ وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدَى وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ سُرَةُ مُحَمَّدٍ Those who are guided, Allah increases them in guidance. وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And Allah increases them in taqwa. He gives them more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that effort, if it's in the wake of effort, then know that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if it is not in the wake of some effort from your behalf, fil aghlab, then it will come from mulhim, for he is your well-wisher. Yes or no? Subhanallah. We'll continue. Allahu Akbar Kabira. Right. As for the good notion that comes from, do you remember we spoke about good notions come from shaitan also? <laughs> Let's elaborate. As for the good notion that comes from Satan, as a temptation to a greater evil, 
He only gives he only gives you good ideas as a temptation for a what? A greater evil. And Imam Ghazali Shaykh, wallahi, he couldn't have said, uttered better words than this. Listen to his words. If you find that your nafs, this is a, in relation to the idea, yes? If you find that your nafs is interested in the idea that has occurred in your mind with a sense of enthusiasm, not of timidity, with a sense of hastiness, not with um, any hesitant, is not hesitant, is hasty for this idea. If your nafs is, is, is uh, it feels a sense of security, not a sense of fear. And your nafs is blind to the consequences, just do it. Nike, yeah? Just do it. Small little phrases are indoctrinating the minds of many of our youngsters. Just do it. Do what? Do what? I haven't even understood that advert since I was a kid. Just do it. Do what exactly? What do you want us to do? Run? Eat? Do what? La umyun, la umyun anil aqiba. You don't fear for the consequences. La ma'a basira. You don't even care about a clear perception of the idea. You don't examine it. Then know that that idea is from shaitan fajtanibhu. So stay away from that idea. Now if it's the opposite, your nafs is fearful and your nafs is not enthusiastic. Wa ma'a ta'an. Wa ma'a ta'an. It's hesitant. It's, it's hesitant and it's not hasty. It's fearful of the con it's fearful and it doesn't feel a sense of security. And you approach this idea. The nafs approaches that idea with the vision of perception, with more clarity, not with blindness to the outcome. Then know that that idea is from Allah or Mulhim. Hmm? The idea is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O Mulhim. Is everyone following me here? Everyone understanding? If there's, if there's any confusion, don't hesitate to come and approach me. Now, what is enthusiasm? What, what do you know about the word enthusiasm? I'm not talking Oxford Dictionary de definitions here, yeah? Let's... Enthusiasm, nashat. In Arabic, it's called nashat. Noon, sheen, alif, and ta. Now, enthusiasm, it's a sense of flightiness that we have as human beings. It's a flightiness, yeah? That we have as human beings to act upon an idea without any clear understanding or foresight and no consideration for its consequence. This is, con this is enthusiasm. So if you see that your nafs is enthusiastic with an idea, shaitan, straight away shaitan. Hmm? So we've got, to, we've got to have a level of ta'anni, it's called ta'anni. Ta'anni is a slow approach, a slow attitude towards any ideas that occur in our minds. And we have to approach all ideas with timidity. Timidity? With some shyness, can you understand? With some shyness and some slowness. You've got to think, you know, ta'anni and khashya Acting slow, having this slow approach and having this timidity within us in approaching ideas that occur in our minds. It's recommended in every single thing but a few in instances. There are some instances that you need to hurry in. Would you like to know the things that you need to hurry in? Let the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, tell us what are the five things. Shaytan al rajim Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, mentions عن النبي رضي الله تعالى عن العجلة من الشيطان إلا في خمس Hastiness is from Satan except in five things There are five things Shaytan does not want you to rush Number one تزويج البكر إذا أدركت To marry off of a, a woman once she reaches the age of maturity i.e. 
do not delay marriage for a woman. If a boy who has good akhlaq, one thing that is a disease in our cultures today. Auntie, is your, is your son PhD doctor? We only accept doctorate here in this family. How much is your son's salary? We only accept 60,000 pounds a year. Wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah. What kind of juhl is this? What kind of ignorance and backward mentality is this? Allahu Akbar. Next they'll be asking, what color trousers does your son wear? Wallahi al-Azim, since my time as an Imam and as a lecturer, as a public lecturer, I have been in nikahs in which the girl has demanded a Mercedes Benz and she's given the registration. I don't know, L Reg, I don't know, I don't know much about cars. And on top of that, hundreds of grams of gold. And on top of that, she wants a check of 10,000 pounds. What is this? What is going on with us? Why have we become so worldly? The Syrians in 2003 were worldly people. I was there in 2002, 2000, 2003, 2004, up to 2005. And what I saw in Syria disgusted me and many others of my brothers that were there. Ask, ask, uh, um, uh, Maulana Munawwar, Atiq, he was with me in Syria. Ask Maulana Amr, he was with me in Syria. Ask, uh, uh Ijaz Shami. He was there with me in Syria. We were all a crew there in Syria. Did you know that in the heart of, the, the, of Damascus, there was a pornographic cinema? This is 2003. Did you not know that there were so many Muslims drinking alcohol in 2003 in Syria? Do you know that so many girls would walk out of their houses wearing their hijab and they would be seen with mini skirts in Shari' Muhyiddin bin Arabi? Did you know this? Wallahi, what is happening to Syria is an azab upon them. Once a people, once the Muslims become in love with the world, then expect destruction. Expect destruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will punish the Muslims through the hand of the kuffar. This is an utmost disgrace and humiliation for us. And then we say, let's go to Dubai. Let's go bungee dumping. Let's go ski diving. Let's go swimming. I don't know what your fancy is. Eh, what is this? Subhanallah, subhanallah. What I see what is happening in Syria is only but khair for them. Now this is a wake up call. Because Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how am I saying this? I need to substantiate my claims. I substantiate my claim through the blessing words of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many times do I have to mention this? I mention it again. It is not poverty that I fear for you all. But I fear that the dunya will become your main concern. Dunya, 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 dunya. Just like the world opened up for those who came before you. They started to dispute among themselves and quarrel among themselves. And the dunya will destroy you just like it destroyed those who came before you. Rasulullah did not fear that we would be penniless. He feared that our hearts will be filled up to our necks with love for materialism and dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Hmm? So shaitan, what does he do? What does shaitan do? He tempts you to a good idea for a greater evil. Hmm? Allahu Akbar Kabira. So, Allahu Akbar, yeah, I just completely forgot where I was. Number one, that was number one. To marry off a woman after she reaches the age of maturity. I do not delay the marriage of a girl. So as I was saying, if a good boy comes to your house, O oh father, O oh father, if a good boy comes, to, comes knocking on your house, whether he is from Deutschland, whether he's a Chinaman, whether he is an African, whether he is uh, uh, an Indian, a Pakistani, a Punjabi, a Gujarati, uh, whatever, whatever village he's from, 
if he has good akhlaq and he has the deen in his heart, this is more wealth, this is more richer than materialistic wealth. Grab hold on to such a son-in-law and make khidmah of such a son-in-law because he will give nothing but goodness for your daughters. Hmm? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is in Tirmidhi Sharif, that if a father, he does not accept a boy whose character is sublime, good character and good deen, then expect the house to break up in fitna. Fitna will plague that house. And this is what is plaguing many of our houses today. Hmm? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and help us to act upon the shari'i, the shari'a and the sunnah before our desires, before our culture and before our traditions. Hmm? Number two, وَقَضَاءِ الدِّينِ إِذَا وَجَبْ And to settle a debt when it falls due for repayment. If you owe anyone money, don't go and do Umrah. If you owe anyone money, don't go and set out for Hajj in case you die on the way to Hajj. Debt is something that is not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until it is forgiven by the creditor. So Shaytan al rajim what does he do? He wants you to procrastinate. He doesn't want you to settle that debt. Out of debt comes the delaying of paying the debt. What happens? Results in murder, results in quarrels. <coughs> Divisions in community. Number three, وَتَجْهِيزِ الْمَيِّتِ إِذَا مَاتَ Something again that we have to understand and implement in our lives. Hurry and bury the dead man. Hurry up and bury him. These are not my words. These are the words of our master Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bury him. Put him six feet under for his questioning. Hmm? The righteous man I just read this in Riyadh al-Salihin, a hadith book of Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi, that the righteous man, when he sees his body being played around, being played around, escorted here, escorted there, hmm? the righteous man's ruh is shouting at the people. This is muttafaqun alayhi hadith, agreed upon hadith. Bury me, woe unto you. Woe unto you people, bury me, put me in peace. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Allahu Akbar kabira. The fourth, وَقَرِضْ ضَيْفْ إِذَا نَزَلْ To be uh, unhospitable? No, inhospitable. Inhospitable. Can someone help me with my English here? Inhospitable? Inhospitable, yeah? To be inhospitable to the guest. Mm. So we all know what kind of societal degradation emerges from such attitude. If you were to throw your guest away and not treat him right. There are rights that a guest has upon you and there are also rights that you have upon your guest. You know you get some funny guests today. Subhanallah. Huh? They come and knock on your door and mashallah come in. You do the sunnah, you bring them in. And they also observe the sunnah, assalamu alaikum, before they enter. Uh, as what Allah gave us from the Quran, injunctions from the Quran. So they're sitting, you've just given him some, some samosas and some bajas and whatever, whatever you cook at home, alhamdulillah. And he's finished his plate of uh, pakoras and he's just licking off the plate of the kebabs. <laughs> and now your missus is in the kitchen preparing the chai. He doesn't want English tea, he wants Pakistani tea. Now we know Pakistani tea takes ages. So your wife's like, TK, TK, no problem. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> your wife's stirring milk and getting the tea ready. And the tea's presented before the guest. And he's drank his tea. Alhamdulillah, you've done your bit. Now the man, the, the sahib al bayt, the master of the house, you know, you have that gesturing, you know, when you look at the watch. Like, hurry up, man, hurry up. And like, you just feel like saying, mate, it's time for you to go, yeah? It's time for you to go. Yeah? But you can't, you don't, you have that shyness, subhanAllah. It's a good sign, it's a good adab. But you start gesturing to your watch. The guest is not clicking on. 
He's still continuing. He's put his feet up on your couch. <laughs> Subhanallah. Junaid Baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi says in a beautiful booklet I have at home. He says that the best guest is the one who knows when to leave. So when you're a guest, know when you have to leave. Don't just stare in the, man in the face and don't click on. Yeah, subhanallah. And the last that shaitan makes haste, what time is it? 8.23. Is, وَالتَّوْبَةِ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ إِذَا إِذَا أُذْنِبَتْ And repenting from a sin, soon as it has been committed, shaitan doesn't want you to hurry in making tawbah. Hmm? He wants you to procrastinate in everything except in this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act upon this hadith. Hmm? In the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, let me go through this quickly. We'll finish the topic of shaitan. We're going to be talking about seven attacks quickly, very quickly. And inshallah next week we'll be moving on to our series of lectures regarding maut, death, and the realities of death. Seven attacks. Seven attacks you have to be aware of. The first attack is that he will simply forbid you to practice. That's it. Stop you from doing dhuhr. Stop you from doing maghrib, etc, etc. If Allah protects such an individual, the person will refute shaitan by saying, what will he say? Muhtajun ila dhalika jiddan. I am in need of this worship. I must attain provision in this temporary world for a life of no conclusion, no finishing. Yes or no? This is how you attack him. If shaitan is telling you, don't go for Dhuhr, don't praise Dhuhr at all. Say to yourself, no, I am in need of this. I am needy. I need this, this provision for my Akhirah. Hmm? Good. Then he comes to the second attack. He will start to uh, command you, he will, he will start to uh, make you fall into, uh, what's it called? Uh, taswif. Taswif is delaying, procrastination. If Allah protects such an individual, that individual will refute, shay will refute shaitan by saying, Laysa ajli bi yadi. My final time is not in my hands. I do not know my final destination. I do not know when I will die. So if I delay my work for tomorrow, I do tomorrow work. What will I work for? فَإِنَّ لِكُلِّ يَوْمٍ عَمَلٍ Every day has its own work. So concentrate on the time you have at your disposal. Don't think about tomorrow. If you think, I'm going to do it tomorrow. How many of us adopt this attitude in our salah? Even in hajj. I'm going to wait till I'm 60 and my beard is white until I have a stick. Then I'm going to go and do hajj. This is from shaitan. A shaitan has attacked you. Perhaps you will come back from hajj with no reward for hajj. Because the ajr, reward for good actions, lies within the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. If Allah protects such an individual, he will refute shaitan. Then he comes with the third attack. He will start to make you to hurry up. Hurry up and do things. Hurry up and pray salah. Do you know how quick some imams lead salah today? Just before I was invited to a, a talk. And some person who was of a peer, he had before his name peer. Are you listening to me? Peer. Nearly everyone today is a peer. If I come tomorrow as a peer's name, kick, the, kick me outside, yeah? <laughs> But wallahi alazim, it won't happen. It won't happen. He led the prayer of Maghrib like this. There is no exaggeration. There are brothers, brothers here present. They can put their hand up and they can refute me right now and say that I am exaggerating. This is his qiyam. This is ruku. Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu liman hamida. No one gets the time to read one tasbih. You go into sujood. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. It's like those, those videos you get viral in Tarawi. You know those funny videos you get Tarawi? Huh? Speedy Gonzalez leading the Tarawi. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, seven minute dot com people, seven minutes. 20 rakats of rakat Tarawi are done in seven minutes. 
Subhanallah. And he, his name is Peer. <laughs> shaitan, he will cause you to be hasty. Because Shaitan, he will say, Ajin, Ajin, be quick, be quick. Hmm? Be quick. Make haste so that you will have time to do such and such things. If Allah protects such an individual, that individual will refute Shaitan. And he will say, Ya Shaitan, a little bit of work done in good completion is better than a lot of work marred with imperfection. Hey Allah. Look at the hikmah of Imam Ghazali, subhanAllah. Huh? Look at the eloquence. Subhanallah. So if you don't have time to perform your four sunnah, for example, there's only three minutes for your four sunnah. In shari'i terms, you have to perform it. If you, if you feel as though you are not going to miss the jamaat, shari'i comes first, yes? Sharia comes first. But try not to rush your salah as much as you can. Hmm? Always try and do little work with, with, with a great, beautiful completion. Hmm? Not with imperfection. Hmm? Subhanallah. And then he goes on to the fourth attack. What does he do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan starts to tell the man, you know, to do things to gain people's admiration. If he is protected, he will say, Oh, oh accursed, Ya Mal'oon, Oh, one who is accursed. Allahu Akbar Kabira. I do not need the approval of anyone. Surely the approval of Allah is all that I need. And he comes and attacks you with the sixth attack. The sixth attack is Allahu Akbar. He will try, the fifth attack is that he will try and make you lapse into vain conceit. You start to be arrogant. Shaitan starts to come in your ear and you say, Ma a'zamak wa ma aiqadak. How great are you? How aiqadak? How wide awake are you? And how ma afdalak? And how excellent are you? You start to think highly in it. Subhanallah, I'm praying salah five times a day, bro. I've got beads around my neck, bro. Hey, you got these as well. You got CPVs with beads around their neck. The only person I knew, I knew who wore beads around his neck was Mawlana Abdul Alim Siddiqi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. And you know who he was? He was the Khalifa of Allah Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza. <laughs> now you got everyone reading beads on their neck. SubhanAllah. Stop this ostentatious display. Put your beads in your pocket before shaitan tempts you. You are a novice in this field. You are a novice in this field. Before shaitan tempts you to do a greater evil, make you do good for a greater evil. Do you understand the notions now? Ah, examples are coming out without me intending to give you an example. You put beads, for here say you put beads around your wrist. It's good, alhamdulillah, it will prompt you to do tasbih, won't it? Maybe that idea is satanic because he wants you to go to a, a much more evil deed. For what? Showing off. He might tempt you in showing off. No one is free from showing off, my dear brothers in Islam. Not even Hujjatul Islam, Imam Ghazali. He wasn't free from ostentatious display. He mentions this and confesses this in his magnum opus, in his Ihya. So be very, very careful. Then he comes up to the sixth attack. We finished. The sixth attack. And this is the greatest attack. The most dangerous attack. Many people have finished. The Iman has finished. They have fallen down the ladder of nearness to Allah. And this attack, <coughs> subhanAllah, listen to this. Look at Shaitan. He's a mastermind. Shaitan is a mastermind. As much as we hate his guts, but he's a mastermind. We have to give him that. Look what he does. He says, he says to that person, you're doing tahajjud in secret, right? Listen to the scenario. You're doing tahajjud in secret. You've been doing it for 40 days in a row. Wali. <laughs> Wali Allah. You do tahajjud, sleep after Isha, wake up for tahajjud, go back to sleep, wake up for Fajr, the act of Dawood alayhi salam. You're a Wali Allah by 40 days, my dear brother, especially in this day. You're a Wali. You do it for sincerely for Allah though. Shaitan comes to you in your sajda. What, you think he's going to leave you alone? 
He's gonna be bombarding you. He comes up to you and he goes, Ijtahid, Ya Mujahid, O oh Mujahid, strive harder and harder and worship Allah. You're in secret. Allah will, so, will soon show to the people your good deeds in your outward appearance. Look how clever he is, this cheeky git. <laughs> huh? Git is in the English dictionary, by the way, it's not vulgar. Okay? He goes, worship Allah in secret. Soon or later, Allah will show your, show your good deeds and your outward appearance. There are some people, when they struggle hard, you see noor on their face. The more they do tahajjud, the more the noor, noor on their face. Their faces is not like your faces. Some people are able to see this, some people are not able to see this. So now when you look, in, you look at yourself in the mirror, your face is as white as snow, my brother. You're like, mashallah, I've got to go into the masjid now. People are going to be thinking, this guy is a buzruk. Eh? He's got, you've got the beads around over your neck. Your face is shining like the moon. Wallahi, I've seen this. People are saying, mashallah, bahat kub surat hai. Bahat nurani hai. Your face is like the Badr moon, the 15th night, and you're like, Mashallah, Mashallah. <laughs> and Shaitan is saying, Allahu Akbar, Ma Aadamak, how great are you? Ma Afdalak, how excellent are you? Ma Aiqadak, how woken up are you? How awake are you? Now you're thinking you're the daddy of Luton. Finished, you have destroyed your, all your amal. Every bit of your amal, your 40 days tahajjud, you might as well wrap it up and flush it down the toilet. Because that's what the malaika are ordered by Allah to do with all your deeds. This is from the hadith of Mu'adh bin Jabal. You see what shaitan does? This attack is very dangerous. If shaitan comes to you like this, then what do you say? Subhanallah. Look at Imam Ghazali, what he says. I'm, just, I'm nobody. Wallahi, bro. I am just quoting the works of the beautiful, illustrious works of Imam Ghazali. Look what he says. This is what you say to shaitan. Oh, accursed. Till now you have constantly been coming up to me to corrupt me. Now you come to me. Look at this. Now you come to me to do good, but inevitably, you still want to corrupt me. You're telling me to worship Allah in secret. You're telling me to do good, but what is the end result? End result is for me to do bad, to show off. Subhanallah, look what you should say. You should say, innama ana abdullah. Indeed, I am a slave of Allah. Wa huwa sayyidi, and Allah is my master. Insha'a adhar. If he wishes, he will make my nur be shown to the people. Wa insha'a akhfa. And if he wishes, he will hide my nur from the people. Allahu Akbar. And if he desires, he will make me important to the people. If Allah wishes, he will make me important. And if he wishes, he will make me insignificant in the sight of others. Whether he makes me insignificant, whether he makes me important, whether he shows my nur, whether he wishes to hide my nur, this is all in the hands of my Lord. This is the way you should talk to shaitan. He hates it. <laughs> he hates it. I do not mind I do not mind whether it's showed to the people or it's not showed to the people. For nothing is at the, at the disposal of the people. Everything is at the disposal of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah Azza wa help us to understand our enemy shaitan.